the Sega Dreamcast. It was supposed to be the savior for Sega's hardware division. Fortunately, as we all know, that's just not how things worked out. Now, we're not here to go through the history of the Dreamcast that's already been covered by a lot of other YouTube channels. What we are going to discuss today is playing PlayStation 1 discs on your Dreamcast. Now, I'm not talking about something difficult that involves opening it up or soldering something. I'm talking about something as simple as taking a PlayStation 1 disc, putting it in your Dreamcast, and playing. And that's exactly what was possible through a commercial emulator that was available at EB. Today, we're going to discuss the Bleemcast. Released in 1999 by the Bleem Company, Bleem was a commercial PlayStation 1 emulator designed to allow original PlayStation games to be played on a PC or Dreamcast. While there were other emulators available at the time, most were difficult to use, suffered crippling compatibility issues, or were just plain sluggish. Many emulators managed to combine all three of these problems into the unholy trinity that was late 1990s emulation. Bleem, the brainchild of David Herbelsheimer and Randy Linden, was going to be different. Bleem was going to be fast, nimble, and worked perfectly with most if not all PlayStation 1 games. So perfectly, in fact, that Bleem would only run off PlayStation 1 discs themselves. Oh, and by the way, it was even going to make the games look better. If that sounds too good to be true, well, you'd be surprised. Bleem for the PC was released in March of 1999, retailing for $29.95. Bleem was initially available at CompUSA, Fry's Electronics, Hastings, Virgin Megastores, and EB Online. By February of 2000, Bleem had already sold 180,000 units. The installation process was incredibly simple, particularly for 1999. You simply copied bleem.exe to the folder of your choice, and if needed, updated Windows DirectX drivers. That was it. Even more incredible than the ease of the installation process was the fact that the emulator itself, the bleem.exe file, was under one megabyte in size. After double-clicking the bleem icon, the emulator would ask you to insert a compatible game disc and click OK. By default, bleem was set up to use the keyboard as a game controller, but it did include automatic settings for dozens of popular PC controllers, as well as the option of manually configuring your controller if it wasn't automatically supported. Other features included 3D hardware acceleration and the memory card being replaced by a file on your PC. This meant practically unlimited space for all of your game saving needs. Not all PlayStation games ran perfectly, but the ones that did showed that Bleem could truly live up to its seemingly overhyped promises. Thanks largely to the ability to use 3D hardware acceleration, many games really did look better when played through Bleem's PC emulator than they did on the PlayStation itself. Here we have Tarzan. You can see the drastic improvement between these two screenshots. The Bleem screenshots look sharper, more detailed, and are generally just more pleasing to the eye. Here we have Legacy. The walls, the floor, and especially the character are much more defined. Now to be fair, not all games look better or good, or anything like they were supposed to. Although these screenshots are from Tekken 2. Yes, those randomly thrown about pens and pencils on your screen are two characters fighting. At E3 2000, Bleem announced that they had created a Dreamcast port of their emulator. This announcement was made in spite of Sony's attempts to have the Bleem company thrown out of E3 altogether. E3's organizers allowed Bleem to stay, but only after they agreed not to show Gran Turismo running on Bleem. Sony claimed that showing it was a violation of their copyright. In truth, Sony didn't want people to see how much better the games looked running under Bleem. Internally for the Bleem company, the Dreamcast variant was known as the Bleemcast. Much like its PC counterpart, it would run PlayStation games on Sega's console at a higher resolution and with bilinear filtering and anti-aliasing. The Bleemcast worked by inserting Bleem CD into the Dreamcast. Once the security checks had completed and the emulator software itself had been loading into the console's memory, Bleem CD would then be swapped out for an original PlayStation disc. The original plan was to have one disc that was capable of running any PlayStation game on the Dreamcast. Technical difficulties from varying game requirements and custom settings made that impossible. So instead, the company developed Bleem Packs. Each Bleem pack would grant access to 100 different PlayStation games. 
There were also plans for BleamPod adapters that would allow PlayStation controllers to be connected directly to the Dreamcast, as well as Bleem branded PlayStation clone controllers that you could plug into the Dreamcast without the need for an adapter. These were practically a necessity due to the fact that the Dreamcast controllers had fewer buttons than the PlayStation controller. Unfortunately, Bleem's need to scale back their plans didn't end there. After months and months of trying to make their Bleem Pack model work with 100 PlayStation games at a time, the company announced that they were finally releasing a Bleem Pack for one game, Gran Turismo 2. David Herpelsheimer, president and CEO of Bleem, had this to say about the release. Our decision to change our strategy and the format of Bleemcast was necessary in order to ensure the quality, compatibility, and enhancements that console users demand. The new format allows us to deliver popular titles with greater enhancements than previously planned to the Dreamcast platform, and at an affordable price, which is what gamers really want. Randy Linden, Chief Technology Officer and creator of the Bleemcast technology, had this to say. The results, although far later than we had hoped for, are well worth it as gamers will see with our first Bleem for Dreamcast pack for Gran Turismo 2. Bleem provides an experience that's far closer to a typical port than we expected could be achieved with our original designs. To complete the experience, we added all the bells and whistles that gamers expect to see in a native Dreamcast title, such as VGA box support and compatibility with a huge range of controllers and peripherals including vibration packs, joypads and steering wheels for using native PlayStation peripherals on your Dreamcast. Finally, since Bleem for Dreamcast supports all international regions of software automatically, we added full PAL extended support and PAL 60Hz support that automatically activates when playing NTSC game software on a PAL Dreamcast. In total, three Bleemcast discs were commercially released, but each disc only worked with one game, Tekken 3, Metal Gear Solid, and the aforementioned Gran Turismo 2. Other Bleem hardware, such as their PlayStation clone controllers, were never manufactured. This left users with only the Dreamcast controllers to use, and although workaround mappings were provided, the smaller number of buttons on the Dreamcast controllers versus PlayStations could make things quite difficult. David Herbelsheimer, Bleem's president and CEO, told IGN in 1999, We don't expect any problems from Sony. We've taken every possible step to ensure the security of not only our software, but have also worked to protect the rights of Sony and PlayStation developers in general. So I don't know how we can protect ourselves any more than we have. Then, two days after Bleem started taking pre-orders, Sony filed a lawsuit against the company. Sony argued that the high quality emulators would increase the gaming black market. They also feared developers using the availability of emulation as a way to try to lessen Sony's licensing fee, rumored to be $10 per game sold, or flat out refused to pay for royalties in future negotiations. Bleem was a small company and found its battle with the giant Sony to be daunting at best. At one point, over a fifth of the money Bleem was making went to pay for its defense against Sony. Bleem eventually won the legal battle when the court ruled that it wasn't violating Sony's rights or unfairly competing with them. One court even issued a protective order to quote, protect David from Goliath. Unfortunately, it was too little, too late for Bleem. The damage was done. After all of the legal fees it had incurred, Bleem found itself unable to afford to continue doing business. And in November of 2001, Bleem closed down for good. In 2003, a beta version of Bleem was leaked onto the internet. This is a pre-release beta that isn't locked down to any game, so its users are free to play any PlayStation game they'd like. The results are very hit and miss, with graphical errors and gameplay issues happening very frequently. Randy Linden and another programmer, Rob Marr, provided background information on the leaked beta and answered a few community questions on a forum thread over at DC Emulation. According to Rob and Linden, the leaked beta was only about 25-30% to 30 complete. When asked about releasing the full source code or emulator, Randy was very, very clear. Bleem is dead. Let it be. Ironically, Randy Linden, one of the original Bleem team members, would go on to work for Sony in 2005. His job? Working on porting titles and looking at the possibility of emulation of previous generation titles for the next PlayStation. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please let me know in the comments. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you subscribe?